Well, hello everybody. I'm glad you decided to stop by, come to my page again. And today I'm going to be talking about redheads. So welcome to Cat's Crazy Corner. Let's get right into this. So yes, as you can tell, I am a redhead. Um, I am a natural redhead, not this shade clearly, um, but the older that I have gotten, the darker my hair is becoming, so I'm not about that life um, because I've always been a ginger and I always will be. Um, and that's uh, just a fact of life here. So I can give you a few clues on how to tell if someone is an actual natural redhead or not because, you know, we get asked that question a lot. Is that your natural red hair? Are you really a natural redhead? Can you prove it? Like, these are the great things that we hear all the time. We don't want you to ask us those questions, especially if you're a dude, because it's just rude. Like, if you want to know if we're a natural redhead, right here, you see this? Do you see this? Eyebrows. You really cannot see my eyebrows. Body hair. You really don't see. It's blonde. It's blonde. Most redheads are either blonde, like invisible, or it's an orangish or a auburnish color. Most natural redheads do not have dark brown eyebrows or brown eyebrows or um, blonde or anything like that. So that's how you can kind of tell who's a natural redhead and who's a bottled redhead. So we're going to just start with some facts about redheads. So yes, we are a very rare breed. Um, only 2% of the entire world population is redheads. Um, the biggest cluster of those redheads is in Scotland. They have about 13% of their population that is redheads. And then it is um, a cluster between Ireland, Wales, and the... Well, Ireland and Wales, they have about 10%, which, yes, I know you would think that it started in Ireland, but it's not. We didn't start in Ireland. We actually started in Southern Asia, is what I was reading now. Um, so, yes, we're associated with Ireland, but that's not where the biggest group of us is. It's in Scotland. And the United States has anywhere from 2 to 6% of the population is redheads. So, we're extremely rare and it's due to um the genetic makeup that we have it used to be thought that it was just the mc1r gene that was the cause but now they've actually found that there are actually eight different genes that um cause red hair and both parents have to have those particular genes in order to pass on the red hair to a child. And you don't necessarily have to have red hair yourself in order to have that gene. Um, it can still be passed on to your child, kind of like the case with my mother. My mother was not a redhead. She was actually a blonde that went more brunettish, but she's still a blondish. Um, so, and both myself and my sister are redheads. Um, let's see. Redheads, we also, it seems like we have a lot more hair, but we actually don't. We have less strands on our head than most other colors of hair. Um, we only have about 90,000 strands compared to 110,000 for people who are brunettes. Um, it's just that we have thicker strands of hair. So it just looks like we have way more hair than we actually do, which is not the case. Um, we also... Um, produce our own vitamin D in a shorter amount of time. Um, we don't absorb a whole lot of vitamin D in our skin, clearly because of the paleness and stuff. So um, we actually produce our own in our bodies. Um, as far as um, going under the knife, um, surgeries, things like that, um, we do actually need more general anesthesia than most other hair colors um, because our pain tolerance um, is different as well as um, it also makes it so that our temperatures change faster. We can actually feel temperature changes faster than most people with different hair colors. And we also bruise easier and that's because that MC1R gene, it actually 
um, it alters the lining of our blood vessels. And so it causes us to be a little more bruisey, which explains why I bruise so easily. It's because of my mutant genes. So there we have that. That's always awesome. Um, and also most redheads um, are left-handed. I'm not. I'm a right-handed, um, which is funny because it's also that red hair and blue eyes is the rarest combination of redheads that you will find. The odds of you being a blue-eyed redhead is 0.17% chance. That's the odds that you have. So we're extremely rare breed because most redheads generally have hazel brown, or I'm sorry, brown, then hazel, then green eyes. So I'm an extremely rare mutant, and I'm just fine with that because I am extremely unique. So just one other thing that makes me super awesome. Um, let's see. There are um, a few days that are recognized. So May 26th is actually World Redhead Day. So remember that. If you have any redhead friends, be sure to give them props on May 26th. And then in August... Um, New Zealand has a Redhead Days Festival, which is like a weeks-long thing. Um, there's other countries that have Redhead Festivals, like a weekend or day, you know, a day or two, where it's just, if you're a Redhead, you're just surrounded by Redheads, which that I think would be cool because it would be fun to be around a bunch of other Redheads like that, like that many Redheads in one place, especially since we are so rare. Um, and then November 5th is Love Your Red Hair Day. So on November 5th, us redheads, we need to love our hair that particular day because it's, that's what it's for. So those three days, remember those. Um, I can say that growing up as a redhead, um, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. Um, it's different now than it was back in the seventies because, um, the 70s, boy, that was a tough time growing up being a redhead. Um, teased a lot, constantly called all kinds of nicknames, nasty things. Um, I hated my freckles, like the book Freckle Juice by Judy Bloom. Like I literally, I wanted to do that because I didn't want to have freckles and red hair. Like I hated it. I hated it so bad that for a while I tried coloring my hair different colors to stay away from being a redhead just because it had traumatized me. Like, honestly, like, um, let's see a lot of the nicknames. Some of them are, you know, maybe cutesy and, you know, just a general thing, but there's some that are really hurtful. Like when you think about them. So, you know, the most typical one is being called red, cherry, rusty. Um, let's see, carrot top. That was always a great one. Um, little orphan, Annie, freckle face, um, ginger or gingy, you know, that's a very common one nowadays is to call us gingers. Um, let's see, um, copperhead, cherry, um, in Australia, they refer to us as bluey. Very interesting. Um, I was called woody woodpecker, which, you know, is okay, but not really because he was kind of an irritating little bird. Um, I was called, um, let's see, Strawberry Shortcake, which again, cute little cartoon thing. So that one I didn't mind quite as much because I was like, oh, it's cute like Strawberry Shortcake. Um, one that I really, really, really disliked was Howdy Doody. And if you're not familiar, um, the reason I hated it was because Howdy Doody is a boy, a redheaded boy puppet, a puppet. He's not even like a cartoon character, like, yes, he was beloved everywhere and around the world and it was a big show and whatever. But for me, being a female, being called Howdy Doody was pretty devastating to me. Um, we're also called Weasley, thanks to, you know, the Harry Potter movies. Um, those are always great. Um, the one that I absolutely hate the most, and I just don't understand why redheads have to have this nickname is fire crotch um despise that despise it hate it absolutely hate it like it's not cute it's not fun that is just it's very disgusting and derogatory and um we don't like it 
So stop doing it because this is my thing. You don't hear um, blondes being called something like that. Brunettes, people with black hair. You don't hear any of them have some sort of a derogatory name for their, you know, lady bits um, or lady parts or just general below the waist area, especially for men, too, because I know they've been called that stuff, too. But so um, I came up with a couple like and how how do you feel? OK, so if you're um, a brunette, why don't we just start calling you poopy cooter? How about that? Would you like that? Isn't that fun? Doesn't that seem like a great thing to say to somebody? Or if you're a blonde, how about vanilla vag? How about that? We could call you vanilla vag. And then for people with black hair or dark hair, how about we call you crow crotch? Isn't that nice? See how terrible that sounds? Like those are not nice things to say to somebody. So please, please stop using that term fire crotch. We absolutely hate it. Stop it. Toss it out of your vocabulary. All right. Um, you know, and also we get the, oh, gingers have no souls and you gain a freckle every time you take a soul and... You know, it's just, ha, ha, ha. Um, yes, we're paler. Yes, we have freckles. I was always told because I would go home crying to my mom about not wanting my freckles. She would tell me that you gained a freckle every time you got an angel kiss. So I believe that for a lot of years. Um, so don't tease people about their freckles because some people are very sensitive to that stuff. Um, especially if you were bullied again, I, and I was one of those people who was bullied a lot. Um, let's see some of the great jokes. Um, what, what do you call a redhead who loses their temper? A ginger snap. <laughs> um, how do you approach a redhead? Gingerly. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Something that you'll never hear any ginger say is, hey, me and a bunch of my, my redhead friends, we're going to go to the beach and tan. You'll never hear that come out of a ginger's mouth. Do you know why? Because we don't. We absolutely don't tan. I will tell you, I um, literally have the um, self-tanning lotion that I put on because in the winter, I literally, scary paley. Like, it's literally, it's, it is. I look down and I'm like, good God almighty, I'm so pale. It's just ishy. Like... I embrace my paleness, but I would like to have a little bit of that bronziness to it. And in the summer, you know, I try to not go in the sun without sunscreen because clearly I can burn like literally like that. Um, but I still would like to have a little bit of that sun kissed look without the lobster look. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I have had some severe sunburns. Um, the one time I went to a tanning bed because... You know, I don't like to lay in the sun as a redhead. I get way too hot. So I figured, uh, go in a tanning bed for about five, ten minutes. We'll be good. The woman there did not tell me that they just put in brand new bulbs. Let me just tell you, um, new bulbs in a tanning bed for a redhead for six minutes. This is what color I was. My entire body, like... I had so much heat generating off of me. I It was hard for me to wear clothes because I was, it hurt so bad. Like sunburn is painful. It's painful. Now, granted, I've never had the sunburn that I've blistered or, you know, anything like that. But it's still very, very painful. It's not a fun experience. And um, most redheads probably own stock in aloe vera gel because that stuff actually does cool it down and it does help with it. I was told to wrap um, cabbage leaves, fresh cabbage leaves, and that would draw the heat out. And I did that after that whole tanning bed fiasco thing. And let me just tell you, um, those leaves wilted off freaking fast. It was pretty crazy. It was pretty, pretty crazy. Anyway, um, and here I'm going to show you some pictures of the different shades of red that I've had over the years. Um, the first one is from high school. I think I was like 14, so I was a freshman in high school. So that's more of my natural tone. Um, <clears throat> and I again, I always try to keep it in the red family of some sort. Um, because 
dyeing red hair another color is really difficult unless you completely bleach your hair out. And I have never, ever once bleached my hair out. Ever. I've never done it. I just apply the color to my natural hair. Um, I might use one of those color removers first to pull and lighten my hair a little bit, but it's never been bleached out to do a new color, which next Friday I will be doing that because I am going to try and go outside of my redheadedness um, because I just want a change. I want to do something funner. I want to do something um, a little more risque. I'm not going to tell you guys what it's going to be, but you will see it in a week. Um, but anyway, again, don't ask gingers, redheads, if the carpet matches the drapes, because that's disgusting to ask us. Um, we know that you're not asking blondes, brunettes, or people with dark hair if the carpet matches the drapes. So don't ask us. Like, that's just, it's just rude, okay? Um, and that's saved for special people anyway. So if you're asking us that, generally, bye bye We're, We don't want anything to do with you. So, um, I have now learned how to embrace my redheadedness. Um, I love being a ginger. I love being a redhead. I like my sp spiciness, spunky. Um, do we have tempers? Absolutely. But we're not really that much different than most people with tempers. Um, for me, myself, it takes a lot for that real, real fieriness in my temper to come out. And it hasn't come out a lot. But when it does... I'm literally shaking, like my whole body shakes. It's 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 a not a fun thing for me to experience. And again, I tolerate a lot and I take a lot. And so to get me to that degree, if you see that temper come out of me, you probably do want to run. Um, but as a rule, most of us redheads, we're extremely fun. And we're just like everybody else. We're just paler. That's it. We're just paler. But hey, we're unique and you can always find us in a crowd. I hope that you enjoyed this segment. Please like, subscribe, and share. And we will see you on the next one. Have a... Ooh, almost losing it. <laughs> Have a wonderful, wonderful day.